So in this video, we want to talk about the nice guy, why the nice guy is so unsuccessful in the world, why the nice guy struggles so much, why the nice guy is basically not getting the girl, not getting the job, not getting moved up and beyond middle management and tends to be average at best. Well, what is it about the nice guy that makes him this way? We're going to dive right into that. Before I do, I want you to like, subscribe and share uh, and definitely comment in the video. Now let's dive right in. So first off, what is a nice guy? Nice guy is a guy that doesn't set boundaries, doesn't say no. It's not bad to be nice, but when you can't when you're nice to a fault, that's a better way to put it. That is a problem. You got to learn to say no. You got to learn to set boundaries. So if you've ever heard something like you're such a nice guy, you're going to make an awesome boyfriend for some other girl someday. Some woman says that to you. Um, you're constantly helping everybody out. You're constantly giving, but you're not getting much in return. You're constantly saying yes to stuff that you don't want to say yes to, like helping your buddy move on the weekend when you don't have time. That's something more important planned. We're over committing and then maybe pissing people off because you can't meet all the demands of your commitments. So basically, nice guys are constantly going out there trying to please everybody else. They think they're going to get their needs met by making other people happy. They think they're going to get their needs met by making everybody happy and then everybody's going to give to them. But ultimately, because they're making such an effort to make everybody else happy, and they're doing it out of manipulation. We'll get to that in a second. They're actually causing more problems than they're, than they're solving by being nice. You see, when you're nice, it's awesome. When you're nice and you're genuinely nice and you're giving and there's no attachment to return, that is an amazing, amazing thing. But when you're giving because you have to, you're giving because you want something in return. You're trying to get everybody to like you. They feel it. It has a subtle psychic communication that pulls on people and they don't respect you. They might take advantage of you though, get you to buy them lunch, get you to buy them dinner, hang out with you, and they don't even realize they're doing it. They just know you're a nice guy. And that's how they see it. But subconsciously, they kind of take advantage. Now, when you look at this at a deeper level, with women, it's so powerful. Think of Elvis, think of James Dean. They weren't nice guys. They broke all the rules. They said all the stuff they weren't supposed to say. They did everything mom told them not to do. You know, buy her flowers. No, they just did what they wanted to do. And if they wanted to say no, they said no. If they wanted to reject, they rejected. That's what made them so powerful. So for you, it's the same thing. When you start learning to say no, Say, just practicing no sometimes. Sometimes people want to hear no. They they want to know you have a backbone. You know, will you buy me that? No, not, not today. Maybe tomorrow if you're lucky. You know, something like that can be very powerful. When you're busy, when you have boundaries, like, no, I'm not going to help you move on Saturday. I'm, I'm busy. Maybe Sunday if you're lucky. And you start to set these boundaries more and more and more. You start to earn the respect of people. You start to uh, pull them in more and more. So what I want you to do if you've got any of these traits of the nice guys, I want you to start thinking about ways that you uh, manipulate people, the ways you try to pull people in to get you to like you. And I want you to start to write them down. Maybe you constantly say yes when you don't want to. And then, and then you get burned out and you say no and you hide from everybody for a while. That's a common trait of a nice guy. Or maybe um, it's the never saying no situation. There's so many people that you never say no to. And think about that. Who are those people? And I want you to start writing down what is not working for you, where you're overly nice in the world. Maybe you don't ask for a raise. Maybe there's a think about tension. Wherever you don't step into tension is a problem for the nice guy because the nice guy is terrified of tension because that's what upsets people. So any place you're not stepping into tension, any place you're not setting a boundary, any place you're not setting no, any place you're not creating a rule for yourself, I want you to start thinking about doing that this week. Make a list of three or four areas you could say no, three or four areas you could set a boundary. And I want you to go out this week and practice doing that. If there's somebody in your life you're constantly giving to because maybe it's somebody you really like, practice say one no this week. See what it feels like. Set that boundary and back up and notice what goes on inside your body. Learn to relax inside of it. Learn to get comfortable with it. There's another in your life where you have somebody that you love hanging out with, but there's never any tension. How can you create some tension in that relationship? Maybe you tease them a little bit. Say, I don't know if I want to hang out with you this week and just kind of play back or say something like, you know what? You, you, you're kind of a pain in the ass, you know, play with that person, push those boundaries. You know, you need to go home right now. I'm, I'm done with you. 
and learn to push those boundaries, learn to play. So I want you to think of where you can say no more. We're going to go all the way back to this. I want you to think of where you can say no more, where you can set boundaries more and start practicing saying no and start practicing saying setting boundaries. Pick two or three areas. Maybe you have some women in your life you need to learn to say no to. Maybe you learn to need to set a couple boundaries and set a couple rules. You're going to find you're going to get more respect. You know, um, on Saturday, I'm really busy. I'm not going to be available. Sorry. I know you want me to take you out. Oh, I know you want me to help you move, but I'm just not going to do it. And notice what that feels like. Notice when you step into that tension, how much that pulls on you or pushes on you and start to learn to relax into it, start to learn to get more comfortable with it. And this will start to help to break your nice guy syndrome. On top of that, I want you to start looking more at alpha males in society. Think of Elvis. He's a great one. How how he just stepped right into that sexual tension, never apologized for it. He wasn't afraid of upsetting people. I love watching videos of him at concerts because you can really see the power of this in the way he moves. Or how about James Dean? I did a video on James Dean in the past in the screen test where he's doing the screen test with, uh, I think it's Lois Smith. And he's just being a bad boy. He's pushing boundaries. He's leaning in. He's creating tension. He's not apologizing for it. It's a very powerful, powerful scene when you think about it. So definitely check that scene out too. Um, Elvis uh, and James Dean were very powerful with the women because of their bad boy tendencies. I like some of these older celebrities that have passed on or moved on. Um, and uh, another great one was Marlon Brando. If you look back at some of his old movie clips, you can see why he was so polarizing with women. He wasn't afraid to say stuff that might make other people uncomfortable. You know, walking up to a woman and saying, you know, there's something about you, you're really sexy, can scare a lot of men, but it's so powerful for a bad boy. It'll scare some women away and pull some women in. Now, I'm gonna cap this off by talking about a friend of mine who's definitely not a nice guy. Um, he's a natural with women and he was constantly seducing women. Now, the one thing I noticed was he was very sexual right up front. He was very forward right up front. He wasn't afraid to say what he wanted to say. Look at you, your eyes are so sexy. Well, I can tell you want me. She'd be like, no, what are you talking about? I haven't said anything about wanting. Oh, I can just tell. And some women would get turned off and they'd run away. Those weren't his girls. And other women were pulled in by it and seduced by it. And it was interesting to watch because in his mind, he wasn't concerned at all with the ones that ran away. Matter of fact, he would say they just couldn't handle it. He was comfortable being himself. And if somebody else couldn't hang with him, he was comfortable with letting them go. In his mind though, he has a little fantasy, everybody wanted him. But because of that, because he wasn't afraid to swing and miss and lose, and he did really well. And he ended up being amazing with women and uh, developing amazing relationship later because those same skills are used to play with the woman that you end up ultimately falling in love with, teasing her, bantering with her, saying no to her because you're not afraid of the tension. It all boils down to the tension. Okay. So hopefully you like this video. Uh, definitely make sure to sub like, share, subscribe, do all that, and definitely put a comment in the video and let us know where you're being a nice guy in your life. And uh, so we can all learn and where you can change. Awesome. Love sharing this with you. Make sure to uh, definitely check out my previous video on why we stay stuck. And also the James Dean video uh, that I did with him flirting with Lois Smith. Those are amazing videos. Also make sure to check out my ebook. I have an ebook on the art of fearless seduction. You'll see something in the banner of the website or down in the video. And with that said, remember only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.